As we approach a late weekend and potentially into early next week, there is a possibility we could see Tropical Storm Brett in the main development region. Take a look at the latest run of the GFS model when it comes to the relative humidity in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. We do see that there's going to be a multitude of tropical waves coming off the west African coast that's going to bring heavy rainfall to northern South America as well as enhance the gyre that's going on right over Central America. And we were talking about the possibility of a small area of convective activity um, of developing into a tropical storm right around the Western Caribbean. We still do see that the GFS model does want to develop a well-defined low pressure system right around the Western Caribbean where the pressure drops down to 1,003 millibars. However, we've been seeing that trend where the, the GFS model wants to bring the moisture further and further westward, which means that it's going to deal with more land interaction. So the chance that we're going to see a tropical storm develop out of this piece of moisture is definitely slim at this point unless we see a significant shift where the moisture would end up a little bit further eastward to the point where it will have more time to absorb the very warm Caribbean waters that this certainly would increase the chance we would see tropical storm Brett in the Western Caribbean however it seems like the GFS model is leaning more to the European models trend um, where the European model been certain for the most part that this area of moisture would move far west enough to mainly deal with too much land interaction to have a chance of developing in, um, into a tropical storm and we exactly see that right here where we don't really see any sort of strong low pressure system right around the western caribbean so we mainly just see enhanced rainfall right over central america however if we were to shift our focus a little bit further eastward we do see that there's a more well-defined tropical wave that's moving through the main development region where we do see the pressure um, drop um, has dropped down to 1006 millibars which is still relatively weak for a tropical wave however that millibar pressure could be enough to potentially be considered a tropical storm depending on how much rotation there is around the center of circulation and of course how much convection there is around the center of circulation as well and moving forward with the forecast we see that this storm will mainly maintain its strength however there is a decent amount of dry air just to the west of this storm system which could be an inhibiting factor as typically during the month of june it's fairly rare for tropical cyclone development to occur right over the main development region and a big reason for that is due to the fact that there is just um, a, a much larger area of dry air right over the main development region during the month of June and July. We see a lot more Saharan dust move through the main development region which which typically inhibits tropical cyclone development from occurring in this region and however it seems like the GFS model and even the European model has been hinting that this tropical wave could be one of those anomalies where there could be just enough moisture surrounding it for this to have a good chance of developing into a tropical storm and moving forward with the forecast we see that not it doesn't necessarily strengthen beyond the point at which it's located in the main development region if anything the gfs model does eventually expect it to weaken even though there will be an enhanced amount of moisture as this moves to the caribbean a big reason for this is because the gfs model expects the wind shear to enhance as it approaches the caribbean where there's going to be up an upper level low that's going to be located close to the proximity of bermuda that should bring a strong um northerly flow that will inhibit this storm from being able to organize itself on all through all levels of the atmosphere so the heat will get diverted and we see the strong wind shear will also be induced by the surface level low that's okay just the northwest of it that's going to divert a lot of the energy from the center of circulation towards this low pressure system so that could be an inhibiting factor as well but look at the forecast hour i'm going at we see that i'm going 228 hours out so there's still a lot of time to 
iron out the forecast by the time this approaches the Caribbean. A lot could change between now and June 24th. So I'll keep you guys updated over the next several days regarding the more long-term future with this storm. However, if we were to take a look at this forecast from the more sh uh, from a more short-term perspective, where it's gonna, where it's suddenly much easier to forecast, we see that. Um, be, before the five day mark, which is considered the time period where the forecast suddenly is a lot more certain, we see a well defined tropical wave move just off the West African coast, moving over the, uh, the sea surf temperatures are just warm enough for tropical cyclone development. The sea surf temperatures should hover around the low 80s, and we do see that there is a good amount of moisture surrounding it that should um, enhance this storm's possibility of developing into to a tropical cyclone but the dry air and the saharan dust will continue to be an inhibiting factor with this storm which will definitely subside the chance that we'll see this develop into a tropical storm here's a look at the saharan air um, layer forecast over the next several days and we do see that much of the main development region is going to be covered by saharan dust and that will inhibit tropical storm development because if um, because if there's a large enough area of saharan dust that will create a temperature inversion in the mid levels of the atmosphere since the dust and since the air associated with the saharan dust is a lot warmer than the surface level air over the sea surface temperatures then that forces the cooler air mass to sink and it, in this case where the saharan dust is over the main development region the cooler air mass will be the very warm and moist air mass which will which and the saharan dust layer will rise since the temperature is warmer than the surrounding air um uh, that's associated with the surface level air so as a result we don't see the surface level air rise up enough and the water vapor rise up enough to the atmosphere to condense and create uh, and create a large area of latent heat for a tropical storm to have a good chance of developing because um, simply because the it's a cooler air mass um, compared to the Saharan air layer, so that certainly will help and potentially inhibit this um, tropical wave from developing. However, this tropical wave still could at least develop just enough of a moisture bubble to where it could fend off the Saharan dust layer just enough to where. It'll still have the possibility, but it's definitely going to be a lot more difficult than, let's say, if it were August or September, where the Saharan air layer is nearly non-existent over the main development region. So this will be one of the inhibiting factors that we're going to need to pay close attention to as this tropical wave continues ahead further westward. Another potential inhibiting factor that could inhibit this storm system from developing is the upper level are the upper level winds, which will play a big role in terms of this storm having a chance of developing. And continuing to move forward with the forecast, we do see that there's going to be a strong amount of wind shear just to the north of this storm system, where we do see that there's going to be an upper level low located right in the middle of the Atlantic, and that will induce moderate to strong upper level winds that will certainly slow down this storm potential development as it continues ahead further eastward but the wind shear won't reach its peak until we see another upper level low that will be located close to northeast move further southward and create a strong northerly upper level flow that will enhance the wind shear even more because if we were to go even um, earlier in the run we do see that the wind shear while it's quite strong just to the north of it we do see that just to the south of this low pressure system the wind shear is just light enough for this to develop a well consolidated and organized heat engine around the center of circulation which lowers the pressure along the surface and all that energy spirals around without getting diverted from the strong upper level winds just to the north of it however it becomes a different story once this heads into the caribbean because now we have the upper level winds moving to directly towards the center of circulation which certainly will divert a lot of that energy away from the storm and that will weaken the winds and of course weaken the possibility that this storm will maintain its strength as it moves further westward again we're gonna need to keep in mind if this forecast ma uh, maintains as this approaches the caribbean still a lot of days 
to really get this forecast very certain for the Caribbean. We still could see the upper level low located in the northeast shift it um shift a little bit over the next several days, which will which could certainly divert this upper level, um, these strong upper level winds away from this storm. But as of right now, it doesn't seem like, at least for a long term future, this will have a good chance of maintaining its strength. But still, a lot of days ago, for this to have a chance of developing or at least maintaining its strength as it approaches the Caribbean, we're gonna need to see the upper level, the this upper level low remain a little bit further northward, and this upper level high located right over the Caribbean stay a little bit further westward. So the north wind component won't be as strong over this storm i'll keep guys updated regarding any changes with the forecast however what's making this forecast a little bit more certain than let's say this recent tropical disturbance i was talking to you guys about over the past several days the one that was supposed to that was supposedly supposed to develop in right around the Western Caribbean is the fact that the European model is also in pretty good agreement regarding this next tropical wave that's expected to move through the main development region where they both want to develop it at around a similar strength, take a similar trajectory, and of course take a similar um, let's say um, demise for this storm system as it approaches the Caribbean where the wind shear just is too much for this storm to handle which makes me a little bit more certain that the possibility of tropical storm development is more likely in the near future in the main development region we're just gonna need to wait and see how the Saharan dust will play a role and if it'll entrain the storm system enough for this to have a good possibility of developing um, let me show you guys a 12z run to give Give you guys a good idea of where this storm will go based on what the european model is stating we do see that the european model expects a similarly strength storm and a similar amount of of strong upper level winds just to the north of it it's a little bit weaker than the gfs model but it's it's very very the difference isn't that noticeable and we do see that eventually the wind shear of um becomes too strong as it approaches the caribbean for this to maintain its strength and then just fizzles out into the open Atlantic. So this does make the forecast a little bit more certain. We're gonna to need to see if these two computer models maintain this forecast. But as of right now, I will say that there certainly is a possibility that a tropical storm will develop in the main development region within the next seven days. Taking a look at the current water vapor imagery, we do see that there's a large amount of Saharan dust moving through the main development region, which is impacting the Caribbean and bringing much warmer than average temperatures throughout the Caribbean islands as those islands are experiencing a little bit of a heat wave right now thanks to this Saharan dust, which is allowing a lot of the shortwave radiation from the sun for, um, to get absorbed by the surface um, throughout these islands, but we do see that this will certainly be a um, play a role in inhib in potentially inhibiting tropical storm development, and we do see a high amount of moisture right over South America and Central America, but it's unlikely this moisture will develop into a tropical um, cyclone in the near future. In terms of how the global tropics hazards outlook is looking over the next few weeks we do see that for the week of june 21st there's an enhanced risk of rainfall anywhere between the caribbean at um all the way to the um eastern portion of the main development region so this enhanced amount of moisture could potentially lead to a tropical um, storm of course when we're in the hurricane season any area of convective activity is always something to watch so that certainly will enhance the possibility of development and this extends into the week of july 4th um, 4th as well however when it comes to the seven day graphical tropical weather outlook as of right now no two new tropical cyclones are expected within the next seven days this could of course be subject to change especially since we've been seeing developments with the computer models that want to develop at least some sort of well-defined tropical disturbance right over the main development region we're going to need to see if national hurricane center um, um takes a look at the computer model and actually believes that those um that the well-defined tropical disturbance will have a good possibility it, it, i think the national hurricane center right now just needs a little bit more confirmation regarding the amount of saharan dust that will exist 
right over the main development region before it could at least outline an area where this tropical disturbance could develop. Take a look at the GFS ensemble members at this time. We do see that a decent amount of ensemble members do want to develop this to near tropical storm status or at tropical storm status and they all take it towards the general area towards the Caribbean taking a slight curve towards the northwest so with some of these ensemble members developing a tropical storm this is definitely something we're going to need to keep an eye on so here's my forecast regarding the possibility of tropical storm brett developing so the first possibility is highly unlikely at this point it's likely that this convective activity over south america will move further westward and deal with too much land interaction to have a good possibility of developing however the chance for this tropical wave will certainly be a lot higher since it's going to be over the open atlantic it's going to be over rel relatively warm waters and will have a good amount of moisture surrounding it to be able to potentially fend off the Saharan dust and the dry air ahead of it. However, um, there's still um, the wind shear could still be too strong for this to develop, and there is that possibility that even though the the Saharan dust might not be strong enough, it could um, it could certain the dry air will just be still too much for this to handle, despite the amount of moisture surrounding it. I'll keep you guys updated over the next several days, but that's it for now, guys, and I thank you guys for watching.